Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about what is unit vector notation and how do you solve problems with it. So previously we've been talking about vectors and there's quite a lot to say about them, but let's just say we have this vector here and let's call this vector A. And maybe this distance over here is going to be three units and this distance over here is going to be four units. And so we can say, typically in the past, we've worked in the x-axis. I do want to label this as the x-axis for now, so we can correlate that with things we've talked about and you've already learned about, this sort of y-axis here. But what if we wanted to do something different? And the point of unit vector notation is to try to make notation and doing calculations a little bit easier for working with vectors. So that's the point of this. It's like a bookkeeping method that a lot of people like and AP physics students in general need to be aware of as well as engineering students and so on because it's used commonly in engineering and physics circles. So let's go ahead and get to it. Well, we could say, well, what if we took one of those units right here and we gave it a definition of a vector of i and in this case we're going to call it i hat with a little funny symbol here and let's say we do something similar over here where we could say this is going to be j hat right here and this i hat is defined as one unit in terms of length in terms of the magnitude here as is the j hat it's just in the different axis and we could say well how could we label this vector. Well, we could say vector a is going to be equal to 3 i hat plus 4 j hat in terms of vector addition. So you may know that this is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. If we made a triangle out of this vector right here where va is the hypotenuse, that would be a 3, 4, 5 triangle. But this, in a nutshell, is going to be our vector unit notation. Okay, and we do need to talk briefly about vector addition and vectors and scalars and how they interrelate with each other. If you had a vector, let's, let's call this vector b. If you had a vector b like this, then if we said, well, what if you had 2b, like 2 as a scalar coefficient multiplied out front to b, what do you think that vector would look like? Well, that vector would be twice as long as the previous vector. I'm not using a ruler and measuring this out right now, but I'm trying to eyeball it and say that's going to be twice the length. Uh, we can make another statement here. We could say if VB is equal to what it was equal to before, then we could say negative B, negative B would be equal to this. So a negative sign will simply reverse the direction of the vector while keeping the same magnitude. What if I wanted to get another vector here? Let's let's call this vector C, and I'll just get some numbers going here. Let's call this minus 2 i hat plus 2 j hat here. And so if these things are true, if these are our definitions of these vectors, then what is vector A plus vector C in terms of vector addition, we could say? Well, what we're going to do here is simply add up the values that you would see. In other words, the answer here is going to be i hat right here. We typically wouldn't write a 1 out in front, just like if we have 2x, we have 2x. If we have 3x, we have 3x. If we just have 1x, usually it's just written as an x. It's understood that there's a 1 coefficient out in front. So for this vector, what we're going to have is the same thing that we're talking about. VA plus VC is equal to I hat plus, it's just four plus two. So that's gonna be six J hat right here. So that's one way to think about how to do this. We could say, all right, VA plus VC over here is equal to this as our answer. You can also label this a little bit differently too. You can say something like this. You can put them in brackets and just say something like 1, 6, and 0. And that's because I haven't talked about the z-axis yet. So we can label this as our x-axis here, our y-axis here, and our z-axis here. You don't have to write a coordinate point for a z-axis if there's nothing in there. It's just to clarify what you're dealing with. Okay, so a lot of people really like this notation. That's the basis of it. That's what you would need to know to be able to solve problems with this. Well, we could take it one step further. How would we do a problem like this? Let's say we had 3VA plus 4VC. What would our answer be for this? 
So if you want to take a moment to try this problem, go for it. See what you would end up with. Okay, well, we're just going to be careful with what we have here. So we have 9 i hat here plus negative 8 i hats. And that's from the VC component, right? So plus 12 j hat hat here from VA. And then from VC, we would have 4 times 2 would be 8. And this is going to be j hat here. And this is going to be j hat here. And so all we need to do is just be careful when we add these things together. You can write this as i plus 20 j hat over here. This is how you could summarize this vector of this problem right here. This is going to be your answer over here for this problem. So that's how you go about doing a little bit more difficult problem. I do want to say there can be a third axis for this. Just a quick heads up, you don't need to do that if you're an AP Physics C Mechanics student, but you will for... AP Physics C E and M. You'll need to be able to do this with electricity and magnetism work in a third dimension. That builds on these ideas of exactly what we've been doing so far, but just adding a third axis, a Z axis here, to be able to think about that. So hopefully that's been helpful. I've done lessons on an entire year of physics, as well as most of the ideas for AP Physics E mechanics. If you have any questions down below, please let me know, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.